Hey there, folks, Finley here. Uh, so this is a quick video to review the material in the auditioning workshop that we did together. Um, it's going to be a little bit longer than some of them because there was a lot of material we went over in that workshop. So the thing to keep in mind, uh, I'm just going to go through the notes that you have the handout for uh, there in the, the system as well. There are three different types of auditions um, that you may be called in for. Um, a musical audition uh, is going to have you well, let me work the other way. The two most common are a monologue versus a cold read. A monologue, you choose a monologue, you prepare it, and you bring it in and present it. A cold read is when you are given a couple of pages from the play, you take about a day, you prepare those, you bring them in, present them. Um, typically, a monologue audition is done when you're auditioning for more than just one play. So if you're auditioning for a whole season, lots of the theaters down here do that. If you're auditioning for a spot in like a college program where you're not just doing one play, but you're doing many things, uh, they'll ask for a monologue because they want to see the sort of material that you're capable of doing, not just can you fit in this one particular play. Um, so you will go, you will choose your own monologue from an existing play. We'll talk about that later. Um, you'll prepare it, you'll memorize it, you'll bring it in, you'll present it. Usually it's a couple of different monologues. Um, a cold read is different. That's typically if you're auditioning for a specific play. Uh, so Raleigh Little Theatre, they produce 13 different shows and they do auditions for each one of them. Um, and so you're auditioning for just one play, you go in, usually the day before, you get what's called a side. It's a strange name, but just it's a page or two from the script, and you go and you prepare that. Typically, cold reads do not have to be memorized, but you should still do all the rest of the preparation, figuring out backstory, figuring out tactic and objective that you would with the character. You still want to create that character on stage, even though it's not memorized. And that's used if you're auditioning for a specific play. That's a cold read. Um, the other type of musical is a, uh, sorry, of audition is a musical audition. Um, Typically in a musical audition, there will be either a monologue component or a cold read component to see if you can act. But of course, in a musical, you have to be able to more than just act, you have to be able to sing and dance. So there's also an audition to see if you can sing and dance. Um, singing wise, you will prepare part of a song, just like you would a monologue. You will choose it, you'll prepare it separately, you'll bring it in, memorize and ready to go. Um, it's not a whole song because they don't have time to listen to a whole song. It's usually 16 to 32 bars, which if you can read music, that's, you know, 16 to 32 measures. That's typically about a verse or a verse and a chorus of a song. It's not much because they can see very rapidly if you have what they're looking for and they've got lots of people to audition for. The other thing you may need to do is a dance audition. Now, unlike um, a singing audition where you choose a song, you prepare it, you bring it in, you do not have to choose a dance and bring it in. That's not how it works. Instead, for a dance audition, you show up, usually in the morning, the choreographer teaches everybody who's auditioning the dance, which for a Broadway show could be a couple hundred people, and then you come back in the afternoon in small groups to show that dance. When we do musical auditions uh, at RTHS, for example, you come in, um, the choreographer teaches everybody uh, at the beginning of the audition, and then we see groups of six or eight doing that dance to see if you can, you can do that dance. It's called a combination or a combo. So those are the types of auditions. Um, people freak out about uh, auditions, as we talked about in the workshopping class. And it's because they they view them as like the worst combination of a, like a talent show um, and a job interview. Uh, and they're really, you know, people get so down on themselves and they end up hating auditions. And they end up sort of acting crazy during auditions because they get so nervous. But the fact is, it's not that. Uh, the auditioner, the director, the casting director is not um, judging you as a human being. They're not even really judging your acting. Because as you know from studying acting, acting consists of packing and objective and reaction. And there's no way to show all that on stage. Uh, in, in, I'm sorry, in, in an audition, in the, you know, the minute that they have to see you, the two minutes they have to see you. Uh, and so what an auditioner is actually looking for are four specific things. Um, and if you demonstrate those, they can sort of imagine that you probably can act. Those four things are, first of all, your type. Do you look appropriate for the character that they are casting? Um, if I'm doing a show called um, Driving Miss Daisy, it's got two characters. One's a, a 80 year old black man, the other's an 80 year old white woman. Um, if you come in and you are a high school student, 
it doesn't matter how good you are. If I'm doing a realistic production of that, I'm not going to cast you. Um, that's what we mean by your type. I wouldn't worry too much about type because type will sometimes not get you cast because you don't fit a role. Other times, type is totally going to get you cast, even if you're not the best actor for it, because you fit that type, that part. Some directors, uh, especially movie directors, care a lot about type because it's movies are a visual medium. Other directors don't care about type at all. Um, shows here at RTHS, I really don't look at type um, because you're all high schoolers, right? So if I'm going to do Driving Miss Daisy, we're going to know that you're not actually 80 years old. Um, so type doesn't matter so much. The second thing that people look for in an audition is professionalism. Um, do you behave like this is a job interview? Do you behave professionally? Uh, because that's what an audition is. If I cast you, I'm going to have to work with you for six to eight weeks or longer than that. Um, no matter how talented someone is, if they are not professional, if they show up and they're, you know, they're acting like a diva or anything like that, I'm not going to want to work with them. And that's visible the moment you walk into the, um, the audition room before you even um, start doing your audition. Are you treating this like a job? The third thing is clarity. Can I, the director, just hear and understand what you're saying? If you're mumbling, um, I'm not going to be able to cast you uh, for a show on stage. So that's three of the four things right there. And none of them have anything to do with acting, being clear, being professional, looking the type. These are things you can do even before you took a drama class. The fourth thing is something that really does go back to drama. And that is, can you pursue an objective? That is the part of acting that you can demonstrate during an audition. Can you choose what the character wants? And can you try to get that during your monologue or during your scene. If you can demonstrate that, the director is going to say, you know, they can do that in a minute. They can probably do the rest of it. So those are the four things, and those are the only four things that are really looked for in an audition. Um, some general notes. I'm not going to go through everything here because of time. Um, but uh, types of monologues, if you're choosing monologues, you want them to be from plays, not movies or stories, because those tend not to be very active. It's very hard to choose an objective for them. Um, and you want to have, if you're going into this seriously, you want to have four monologues total because people always ask for two categories, classical and contemporary. Contemporary just means modern. Classical just means written before the year 1900. Most people do Shakespeare for that. And then comedic and dramatic. Comedic just means it's a little bit funny. It doesn't have to be laugh out loud. Dramatic just means it's a little bit more serious. It does not mean you have to cry. Please don't cry in, in an audition. It makes the, the director uncomfortable. So if you have four monologues, a classical comedic, a classical dramatic, a contemporary comedic, a contemporary dramatic, you have all your monologues uh, sort of covered. I've been using the same four monologues since uh, since college because um, I really like them. Um, those monologues should be short. Uh, don't let them be long because the auditioner, uh, the director is going to want to, has going to have to get through in some cases hundreds of people in a day. And they can tell if they're going to cast you within 30 seconds or so. They can see your type as soon as you walk in the door. They know if you're professional before you begin the, the, um, the monologue just by the way you comport yourself in interacting with them. They can tell your clarity within the first sentence and they can tell if you're pursuing an objective in 30 seconds. So anything more than a minute, the auditioner doesn't need to see and you're wasting their time. So keep them short. Um, and then most importantly, keep in mind that most auditions end in no, but that shouldn't depress you because only the yes counts. No one keeps an anti-resume of all the shows they didn't make it into. That's insane. Um, so it doesn't matter if it takes you one audition or 10 auditions or 100 auditions to get cast. Um, no one's counting that. Um, and the reason they end up with no is it's not because you're not good. It's just that there are, in the professional theater, 10 to 1 or 50 to 1 uh, people auditioning for every role that's available. So unlike uh, the typical job market where there may be a few people um, interviewing, you know, maybe there's three or four people who finally get to the final interview for a job, um, there's 10 or 20 or 30 people coming to the final um, auditions for something, uh, for, for one role. Uh, so the competition is just much higher. And so even if you're great, you may not get cast. Maybe it's a thing about type. Maybe it's uh, a thing about you know, uh, what they need in a given show. So don't let the no's depress you. Just accept that no's are part of it and move on to the next thing. Um, a few very technical things. 
Um, there will always be a chair in the audition room. Don't use it. If you're sitting down, you're cutting off half of the expression in your body. Um, lots of people, the, the chair is sort of a trap because lots of people when they get nervous in an audition, they ask for a chair so they can sit down because they think it'll make them less nervous. It doesn't make you less nervous. It just makes you less of an impressive actor. Um, in terms of what you should wear, dress as a job interview because that's what it is. Exactly the same, you know, shirt and tie for guys, you know, skirt or a nice uh, sort of pant ensemble for women. Um, do not costume because it will make you look like a crazy person. Do not bring in props for an audition. If your monologue you chose requires a prop like a phone or a glass, choose another monologue because the director will be distracted. Um, maybe most importantly, be nice to everyone. Don't be a diva. I think uh, American Idol gives us this idea that you can be awful to the people around you um, as long as you're talented. And it's, it's just not true. It's a lie. Um, I've lo known lots of very talented performers who acted that way, who were a bit of divas. But in a year or two, once that reputation sort of circulated, they didn't get cast anymore. Because there's not that many directors out there. In the Triangle area, there's probably 20 working directors who work regularly. And we all know each other. Um, and... Uh, you know, I'm just a high school director, but I worked in the professional theater, so I know most of them, and I know there's not many out there. Um, and we all talk to each other, and so if you have an, an awful reputation, directors who you haven't even worked with are going to know about that. Great news is, if you're good, people know about that too, uh, all the time. Um, if you come in and you're professional and you do your work, it doesn't matter so much the talent, but if you are a professional, um, directors in this area are going to talk about you as well. Um, and you're going to get a great reputation and, and auditioning is going to get easier for you. Finally, last little technical thing. Um, when you go to an audition, you need to bring in a piece of paper. It's two-sided. One side is what's uh, is your resume. And this is not your work resume. This is your acting resume. It has three parts. Your contact information, um, the top name, how to get in touch with you. So if someone wants to offer you a role, they can. Then the biggest section is the list of the shows you've done and the roles that you've played with them. It's a sort of three columns, um, name of the play, name of your role, and where you did it or who directed it. Um, the play is important so we know sort of the sort of work you do. The role is important so we know, oh, yeah, this person's played a lead before. I, I can feel confident in giving them a lead here. Um, and, the, and the theater where you did it, or the director is important because, like I said, directors know each other. So that way I can say, oh, this person uh, did a show uh, with Dana Marks, and I can call up Dana, and and she can tell me you know, what that person was. So those are the three parts of the, uh, the show list. And don't worry if it's not a very long list right now. Um, when you're in high school, if you've got one, two, three, four uh, credits on your resume, that's all anyone's really looking for. And then the last section is special skills. Um, this is stuff that might be useful on stage. If you can juggle, put it there. If you're a great singer, put it there in your range. If you play piano or violin, put it there. These are skills that a uh, character in a play may need to have, and so knowing an actor has those skills makes it easier to cast them. Staple to the back of that resume, it's always just one page, by the way, because if it's more than one page, they don't want to flip through that. So if you have a huge number of shows, start taking off the show. Shows should be um, chronological, so the oldest show first and the most recent show at the end. Um, and so, or, or vice versa, just a bit should be in, in chron chronological order. Um, and if you start getting a lot of shows, just start taking off the older shows to make sure it stays to one page. A staple to the back of that is your headshot. This has nothing to do with, with snipers. Um, a headshot is a photo of your head, usually just here, or maybe it's called a three-quarter, in which case we get to the top of your shoulders. It's just a reference. It's so that the auditioner at the end of the day, when they've seen 200 people, can say, oh, who is that guy who came in with you know three eyeballs? And they can look through your headshots and see who that who that was. Um, you don't. It used to be that you would spend a fortune on these, getting them uh, shot, getting them printed. You don't need to do that anymore. Find a friend who has a digital camera. Have them take uh, some pictures of your of your face. Save them digitally. Just print them out. You can do that at uh, FedEx office. You can do that at Walgreens for a dollar. Um, print them out and staple them to the back of your resume and you just hand that to the auditioner. So um, yeah, that's pretty much the details for the um, auditioning stuff. We went more into detail in class. So if you have more specific questions, like we went into something in class that I didn't cover here, do ask me, um, toss me an email, um, find me in class. But those are the basics for auditioning. Thanks so much.